Hello, I'm Lance Zimmerman, and welcome to the Cattle Facts Closing Bell for Friday, August 12th. Today's top story, the implication of this week's markets. It's difficult to ignore the magnitude and volatility that shaped this week's financial and commodity markets. At the close of trade on Friday, August 5th, Standard & Poor's downgraded the U.S. government's AAA debt rating to AA+. On Monday, financial markets dropped 2% in each of the major market indexes, mainly the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. These declines were on top of last week's already historically bearish market behavior, where the three indexes dropped between 6 and 8% in total value. The silver lining of the financial market decline is the resiliency seen in the commodity markets. In the last week, feeder cattle prices improved $1.50 per hundredweight, live cattle prices increased $3.75, and lean hog prices are $1.70 higher. Grain markets traded higher on Thursday after the USDA released its August Agricultural Supply and Demand Report. The USDA reduced its yield estimate for the upcoming corn harvest to 153 bushels per acre, 5.7 bushels lower than last month. It exceeded industry expectations and moved December 2011 futures prices to near contract highs. Soybean and wheat futures experienced similar moves after the report, advancing 25 to 30 cents per bushel on Thursday. Tight supplies for most U.S. commodities are supporting prices when financial uncertainty typically pushes commodity prices lower. It's reasonable to assume cattle, hog, and corn prices will continue to trade in these higher price ranges for the foreseeable future. However, demand will be important in determining whether these price levels are sustainable. Cattle and box beef prices have increased enough in recent weeks to cut feedlot losses and keep packers profitable. Each sector needs to be profitable to support cattle prices this fall. Pork prices continue to trend higher on support from high export volumes, and continued trade activity will be essential to maintaining current prices. Tight supplies are driving corn market prices today. Yield reductions were likely leading up to harvest, however USDA analysts remain skeptical concerning USDA production estimates. Significant acreage reductions next month could push prices to a higher trading range. All of these trends will continue to drive the markets going into fall and will serve as important price indicators going into the new year. Now, your weekly commodity markets. The fed cattle market was three to four dollars higher this week as cattle in the south sold for hundred and sixteen dollars per hundredweight, while trade in the north occurred primarily at hundred and sixteen to hundred and seventeen dollars per hundredweight live and $184 to $185 dressed. Box beef prices moved higher this week as well, helped out by the higher fed cattle market and sellers coming into the week in a well-sold position. Feeder cattle values were steady to as much as $3 higher this week, while calves were mixed but largely unchanged. Slaughter cows sold steady to $2 firmer, and demand is good for all classes of replacement cattle while movement continues to be active in the drier areas of the south. Corn was higher this week as well following Thursday's USDA crop report that indicated yield losses on the fall crop due to adverse weather conditions this spring and summer. Thanks for watching and remember to visit cattlefacts.com for your latest market news and analysis.